who's ready for another session? <laughs> you. Okay, today we're going to talk about, um, you've seen me talk about always inking, you know, the ink that I use. So today we're going to talk about the other one, the opposite, which are, which is, is our, um, all the different whites that you use that goes with the inks, sometimes for corrections, sometimes for enhancements, sometimes for fun experiments. These are some of the options, and there are many, I'm sure, that I've not even used or tried. Um, I've tried a few, but um, I'll get to what I use. But there are quickie options like your little, I think this is the Sharpie white pen where you tap on the tip, white will flow. Same with this. And this finer gel pen. Um, the These are great like when they're fresh, but I find that um, they don't, they're, they're right when they're fresh, but after a while, like the tip kind of uh, clogs or the white dries on the tip so it doesn't flow as smoothly, which, you know, you could use for like rain and stuff or any time you want to use kind of like a pen that will skip or give a, a, a more of a scratchy line effect. So again, you don't have to throw anything away. You can hang on to it for just the right timing or just to play around. So if you need something that's a little more rough or that I'll skip the only oh the other problem I find with these where you press on the tip to release the the white the flow is um sometimes you have to be careful because it'll just plop down so you're not going to get um much control on like if you're doing a small area or thin line um sometimes the way I use this is I put it on like a you know like a, a little plate or a little something so to get the white out like um, because I mix my white so it's uh, something that I can use quick and I can use just dip your brush in it so you can use it that way too but um, I believe there are many available um, you might know of some that I don't know of so feel free to share there's so many options out there so feel free to discuss discuss share um, I may not respond to all of them, but I love the discussions that you guys have, and I do read all the comments. Um, so please feel free to comment. It uh, feeds my ego. So, <laughs> so what I use, and it's something that I've used for a long, long time, because, it, I mean, it works for me. I um, It works because I mix it myself, and I can make it like I can dilute it down with water and, I, and I'll tell you why I like them. So the FW acrylic I like because of um, it's, it's a little more glossy and sticky and I mix it with the Pro White which is more chalky and the problem I found with the Pro White was maybe it was the way I was doing it but um, when it, when it dries, it it cracks and it becomes a little chalky and it's very brittle on the on your board on the original board. If you don't really want that, this will kind of hold it together. And also, uh, but this uh, does not cover as well. The Pro White helps with that, the opacity. So I mix the two and it's kind of roughly 50-50. I measure nothing, so it just drops of each and then um, mix it together. If either one gets, this will dry out. So you kind of have to, when it dries out, um, I just add water. So I mix these two and when it sits out, like if it's, you know, if it's a little too runny, which is good if you're using a nib, you kind of need, need for it to flow. 
but um, sometimes that doesn't give you a, the good coverage if you're doing corrections or if you're going if you're working on like a you know a, an inked or black large surface it will not cover so well if you need good coverage um, the pro white helps a lot with that so um, and what I use is just little drops of water that's it that is it nothing magic and I just mix it in whatever little saucer or little plate or little bowl that you have and uh, if I'm working and it I mean it dries out really fast so if I'm uh, taking a break or if I go off or if I'm not gonna use it for a while I just cover it up and that will keep it from evaporating um, while I'm gone um, but if you want it to evaporate because sometimes I you know for different effects you want like a thicker mix just leave it it'll evaporate really I mean, well, it depends on where you live, I suppose, but um, it will evaporate and you can get, like if you mix it a little too runny, let it sit for a little bit um, and it will dry out. When it dries out, it's just like, you know, just it's just dry. I just add more water, let it sit for a little bit. Uh, if I know when I'm needing it that day and I have like that paste or, you know, it's all like dried cracked mud, I just add a little water, let it sit there for a little while, come back later and just kind of mix it and put it back into solution. So that's what I use. Um, and okay, and story, story time. So um, I think uh, some have asked who some of my influences um, are and um, what are some, there are some significant moments, um, one of which, and this is kind of funny, but <laughs> not like ha ha funny, but um, I think sometimes like the people who have influenced you in a way that, um, you know, that, that sticks with you for a long time, they, you know, they may not realize it at the time, and I'm fairly sure that, um, he has no idea how much um, of a seed that he planted in my head. Um, but when I was at Wildstorm, um, you know, some of you may know I assisted for um, Alex, um, Gardner, Trevor Scott, and Sal Regla. Um, so, uh, Scott Wilmes already had his, I think, two or three assistants at the time. So, um, so I assisted for for three different inkers and I um, ended up assisting full-time for Trevor Scott. And um, so um, while I was uh, working at the studio with, with Trevor, um, Richard Bennett and um, Aaron Weisenfeld came into the studio. They usually work at home and they come in once in a while and, you know, you know, the, you know, chat or bring in you know turn in art or whatever they'll breeze in for a little bit and I was working and my desk was next to Trevor's and um they were sharing and I usually I mean I don't talk to anyone I just sit there and do my work um so they were chatting with Trevor and um uh Richard Bennett had was showing a page that he brought in I believe it was brass and he was working with Aaron at the time on on brass and he was they uh, he and, and Trevor were um, you know talking about the inks and what they're doing and uh, being right next to you know to Trevor's desk I could see what they were working on and um, Richard had a page that was partially finished and he was playing around with with whites on his inks and I had I had no idea <laughs> and I was just barely like learning about inking so it kind of blew my mind that I was like oh wow you can use whites for more than just corrections so that was a seed that was planted in my head and I thought as soon as I learn how to do this whole inking thing I would love to be able to integrate like using whites on um, to, to work with the, you know, the, with the inks. And um, it was just so cool looking. I think he just did texture on metal and there was some scratchy stuff and he went in with some whites to 
kind of add yet another layer to it. So that was a seed that that was planted in my head and that has, um, you know, that was a big um, influential moment. So Richard Bennett, thank you. I don't think you realize that it, it uh, it was a moment, so thank you. And um, and you know, like I said, I knew that as soon as I could figure out or even understand using just the ink itself, I was going to figure out how I could play around with the white stuff because I realized there's so much more that you could do. Um, uh, so, so that was one person who had a big influence on me, and I'm sure, like I said, he has no idea. Probably still has no idea. Um, and the other two um, big influence, influences were uh, Scott Williams for the reason that, you know, everything that he inks, I feel, is like, when I see it, I feel like that's exactly how it should be inked. You know, it feels so natural. Nothing, it, it's, it's never stiff. It's always like just it was it's not like worked and it takes nothing from the pencils it just you know to me seems like that's exactly that's how it was meant to be inked um and of course um alex is you know the other person who alex garner is the other person who i um kind of wanted to pull from is because I felt like he, is, you know, Alex's inks, um, and you know, at the studio, I, I, he doesn't ink anymore. He does much more now. But um, at the time, I just thought every time I saw his inks, I thought, oh my gosh, it's like perfect. Everything about it is perfect. It's so clean. It's so sharp, and there's like it's. It was just. It was just perfect. So to me, I thought like. If I could ink like Scott, Alex, and Richard all put together, that would be so ideal. Um, that so that, you know so that was something that was those were like sort of my guides. Um, but you know, as any artist or human being who's on their journey to something, eventually you kind of do your own thing because. At the end of the day, you can't really like just copy any one person or anyone's method or style or you know path. You kind of do. You have to do your own thing. I think that's the only way to grow and have fun. Um, uh, and you know they're already doing their thing perfectly, so there's there's no way you can kind of outdo anyone else in their way so you kind of have to do your own thing but uh, you can definitely pull be influenced by it you can be inspired by it but yeah with all that said um welcome to the ink monkey tmi channel but um i will do a little demo with uh using white over um inks and I have, like I said, my premix. And okay, <laughs> here we go. This is low budget production, guys. My cameraman gets nothing. Um, I get nothing in terms of pay. So prepare because I'm going to flip the phone. There's no editing. <laughs> so flip the phone, close your eyes for a couple seconds. I keep my fingers crossed, so you keep your fingers crossed too. Let's hope this works, okay? So here we go. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Ta-da! This is my fancy move for this guy, for this one, guys. I think I have it. And since I make it a habit to wander off the screen, I have taped my board to my desk. Ta-da! Okay, so hopefully this works out for this one. I'm gonna move my light though. Okay, so we're gonna play around. Sort of like the cloud thing that I did. We're going to do like a smoke thing and I kind of 
the one advice I will give for working with um, the, your ink and your white is you want to make sure your ink is dry or if you're going the reverse, if you have white on your page and you're going in with your inks, make sure that layer is dry before you put on like the opposite color because that's the way to kind of keep the layers separate and it looks more like um like you know one veil over another as opposed to like one single layer of gray mud so we want to avoid the mud look and i think am i still on camera hi hi okay i'm still on okay so we're going to do a little bit of inking and I was thinking about using a Tombow, but I will use my brush. So this is kind of just rough outline of like uh, smoke and going into like a black area, nighttime. So I'll just do a quick inking, pretend these are flames. Ooh, okay, it's a little washed out. I didn't even try out my brush before this. So hope it dries quick. Flames. Okay, see, I can't talk in ink. So this is, is going to be rough, but you get the picture, okay? You get the picture. Sometimes I like to add little flakes of stuff. Snap, crackle, crack. Wait. Pop, snap. How does that cereal go? Snap, crackle, pop. There we go. I think so. Which used to be my favorite cereal as a kid. Okay. Here. Snap, crackle, pop. Okay, so a little debris of stuff. You can do that or a little inking tip, I suppose. Flick in a couple little things. You say you have a bonfire. So stuff flying around. Okay, I won't do too much because that's going to be muddy if I don't let that dry. So, okay, I have flames. And... Now we're gonna go in with some fun white stuff. Still on. Okay. So like I said, I have pre-mixed my FW and my Pro White. Um, some things we're going to use for texture. So I have different sponges and they have, ooh, different textures on them just any like old sponges uh, like you can get a variety pack of sponges that way you can play around with the different texture the other thing i also use is like you know the little packing foam that all this stuff comes in like when you order things so recycle reuse repurpose is that how it goes or makeup sponge so some have finer texture some chunkier textures, you use them together, and more little packing foam. I trim it, I cut it so it's round, that way you can kind of, like if you want to kind of roll it, you don't have any, you know, sharp edges. So, okay, demo. Kind of like the clouds where you go in, and, um, where's my brush? Oh, and also the other tip is to keep things from mixing and being gray, I keep separate brush for white and and inks. So I never use the same brush for both. So keep it separated. Same same with your toothbrush. So okay. So we have our fake fire and smoke. And what you can do is like right there. I went in too soon. And so it just looks gray, so I'm covering it up. 
And you can do bright, dry brush on the sides too. So sometimes I just go in and if I've already outlined like the smoke roughly, you can do that. And then you can use whatever texture tool and people use their fingerprints too. I don't have much luck with that because I don't know if my fingerprints are like too small, but you tap that in, you can do that too. You can mix it up just to keep it more like interesting in terms of different types of texture that you want to put. Work your way out to soften the edge of what's, what the smoke will be. And then it looks more smoky. Like I said, make sure you have your, um, your ink layer is dry. Otherwise, it will look gray and muddy, not as good, not so good. And sometimes I will, like for these little foam and sponges, the benefit of the foam, like the plastic foam, is that it will not soak up your, if you are using it with ink, it won't soak up all your ink and your white. Um, so you'll have more on the surface, but the sponge will soak it up. And sometimes the surface dries a little too quickly and you won't get as much. Um, to work with. So you can go so if it's smoke, it flows in different directions. Like I said, you can mix like your fingerprint if you have some already on there. You have like little where you're where you just place your white, it's gonna be something for you to work with. Like you can start there and take some and carry it outwards. And it'll slowly get lighter and lighter, or you know what I mean, less and less concentrated. So it'll have a natural fade. And like I said, you can use bigger sponges too. You can either dip it in your white or you can just use your brush, brush it on. Okay, so the sponge will, will soak in the water, so you have to work a little faster with that. You can just kind of pretend like the smoke is just going everywhere. If you want, you can play around with doing that too. You can use a sponge and brush it on and then fade it out. It looks real crappy and sloppy here, but you get the idea. <laughs> Take more time while I'm doing an actual page, but this is demonstration, so you guys play around too. It's not going to be perfect. And you can kind of like fade it outward, do the same thing on the other side. Just get a little bit of that soft smoke. Is it billowy? Is that the word? Have it just, and you can have little pops too. Sometimes little bit, little bits of it will drift to the side, or you can make it drift. Whatever you want to do. Happy little smoky puffs. Like I said, this is gonna look terrible. Maybe I'll bring out demonstrate a little example of how I'm going really fast, you guys. I don't want these videos to take forever, so I'm trying to go fast. But yeah. And fade out like that definition so it just kind of flows into your your smoke flows into the black area a little more gracefully than how I'm doing it. But you can definitely get out of control, which I have done before. And if you do that, what you can do is you can flick some uh, your ink back in and then you can dab it backwards. I mean, you can go back and forth, but I recommend you let each layer 
dry first so it doesn't look like gray mud. Okay. Not real good right there, but you get it. You get what I'm saying. And what you can do is like sometimes if you just want and I do a lot of like going back and forth and mixing, um, you know, different techniques just to make it look like softer. So there's no, you don't have to stick. So you can do the toothbrush, toothbrush technique too, to kind of add to it, just to keep it a lot more, uh, not natural right here, but it would look more natural. <laughs> and then you can dab that out too. So the dabbing just make, just gives it a softer look. Like I said, it looks a little chaotic here, but boo, boo. And you can just kind of mist it along. Oops, I do that. So there, and like I said, if you have little if you've gone a little too crazy, you can come back with your ink. Once again, patience, which is um, not what I have right now, but you can come back in with your like a little brush just to keep so you don't lose the texture so you don't have any hard edges. You can definitely pull it back in the reverse. Just flick that in a little bit. And sometimes you can do this to add a little more if you want a little debris flying off. So you can kind of correct what you went over, where you went overboard or if you want to kind of like shape it a little bit better, give it a little more form. I guess even smoke has form or you want to mix it in a little bit, yet give it another layer. You can do that too. No hard edges. So if you can just strategically place your ink and then come back in so you don't have any hard edges and you can do that too, add a little more. And you can do more, have more fading in between. A whole lot of tap dancing. Do, 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 do. If you want, you can do that too. More. Make it super crazy. So, like I said, my influence is in the beginning. A lot of it, I mean, I like, you know, the cleanliness and the sharpness of Alex, but right now I'm really trying to figure out how to be less structured, a little more carefree, a little more almost kind of messy, strategically messy. I don't know how that works, but um, you can start with like, you know, one kind of inspiration and then find that you might want to play around in a different direction and find yourself mixing. Now I'm just goofing off. But um, so there you go. There's lots of different things that you can do. Um, as an inker, I think, like I said, it's all like little subtle things. And um, I have experimented right on the page, but you might want to practice <laughs> on the side if you're inking on like a, a project um, for publishing, maybe practice on the side first. <laughs> This is just for fun, so if you mess up, it's okay. And even if you mess up for publishing stuff, I think the whole idea is, it isn't um, to be perfect, but it's just, you know, sometimes maybe you gotta learn how to correct a little bit of what you did. So it's kind of ugly and messy, but you get the idea of the technique and uh, play around, ha ha ha. And if you're really crazy, you can come back in. 
and I will stop at some point, you guys. So if you want to come in and add more, like a, I don't know, a little, maybe a little flame that escaped, you can do that too. Maybe. Little particles flying off. Okay, but um, there's my little session on a little story about people who can influence you. So you never know, guys. People are always listening um, or watching. And we'll flip the phone again. Oh, here we go. Um, you never know who you're going to influence. <laughs> um, but I do appreciate all those people who have um, shared and this is kind of why I'm sharing. Um, it, we're all kind of still playing and experimenting. Uh, I'm learning, I'm trying to learn about colors and play around a little bit more outside of what I know, what I've been doing in publishing work. So um, I'm happy to share what I know, um, but uh, you know, again, what, how I do things or what I use, they're not the, it's not the only, the only way, it's, they're not the only, you know, tools or supplies. Um, th these are things that are working for me right now. I may use other things, I'll use some other things. There's no rules. So just kind of play around and give yourself some room to have fun. Um, uh, that's about the best advice and definitely, um, you know, share if you have things that, or you know like different whites or different inks or different techniques um excuse me i do read the comments and i appreciate you all sharing your experiments and i do appreciate it and it's not just for me i think you know, whoever uh everyone else who's reading the comments so if you have different things that you try that works share it um and as always i appreciate you guys watching and and um commenting and coming back uh to this silly little channel um thanks guys go get your hands dirty <laughs>